Okay, so in this lecture, we are uh, going to start with a new chapter, which is called as uh, factorization. And this chap in this chapter, we are going to cover two important uh, concepts called as first is what is a PID, which is a principal ideal domain. And second important concept we will study is UFD, which is called as a unique factorization domain so to study uh, the principal ideal domains we are going to need some very basic definitions so let me start with those simple basic definitions and then we will cover what is a pid so what is the first thing is now all of you know what is meant by a unit what is a unit a unit is something which has what which has multiplicative inverse right so this is a important definition for us the next definition is something called as associates now what is the meaning of associates so i will take two elements a and b in the ring and i want to see that when are these two elements a and b said to be associates of each other the meaning is that i can't find a unit u u is a unit such that uh, a should be equal to what a should be equal to bu or b should be equal to au if i can do this then i will say that uh, a and b are associates of each other right so what is the simple example to understand the meaning of associates so let me write that example suppose i'm working in the uh, ring of integers okay this is a ring and uh, what i will do is i will take two elements a equal to 2 and suppose b is equal to minus 2 right so a is 2 and b is minus 2 so are they associates of each other so i will say that can i write a equal to b into u where u is a unit in that case a and b are associates so this is 2 and this is minus 2 so what should i multiply 2 minus 2 so that i will get 2 so i will multiply it by what i can multiply it by minus 1 uh, but is minus 1 a unit minus 1 a unit in z does minus 1 have multiplicative inverse in z minus 1 into what is equal to 1 so i know minus 1 multiplied by minus 1 itself is 1 so this means that minus 1 is a unit because it has multiplicative inverse and therefore the conclusion of all this is that therefore 2 and minus 2 will become what they will become associates of each other let me take one more simple example suppose i take 2 and 3 in this uh, in the ring z so are they associates so can you find uh, some unit so 2 is equal to 3 multiplied by u can you find such u which is a unit in z now we know that units in z what are the elements in z which have multiplicative inverses the units in z there are only two units namely one and minus only these people have multiplicative inverses in z so 2 is equal to 3 into u so this u can has only two choices either it can be 1 or minus 1 so this means that this you will never be able to find such a u which will give 2 is equal to 3 into u right and this u is a unit in z so it is not possible so this means that 2 and 3 are not associates right so this two examples uh, give me one simple conclusion that in z what are the associates uh, in z the only associates in z is number a and it's minus a because a can be written as what minus a into minus one so this means that a and minus a are always associates of each other in z right suppose i am going in a ring uh, if if i go in a ring suppose real numbers real numbers with respect to addition multiplication and let me take numbers two and three now are they as associates of each other so i will say two is equal to three into something can i find something u which is unit in real numbers now the, the set has changed so i can say yes i can multiply this three by what two upon three and then i will get it exactly equal to two so this two upon three is a real number right and uh, what and is it unit is two upon three unit so is it unit does it have multiplicative inverse 
So I know that 2 upon 3 multiplied by 3 upon 2 will give me how much? 1. So 2 upon 3 becomes what? It becomes a unit, right? So therefore, 2 and 3 are associates in uh, real numbers, but they are not associates in the set of integers, right? So one important observation that you have to do here is that if I know that A and B are associates of each other, okay, then I can say that A is equal to b into u which is uh, i will just if this u is unit i will just bring this unit on the left hand side and i will write a into u inverse is equal to b into u into u inverse which is inverse of that u so this is a into u inverse is equal to what b and therefore this is giving me that b is equal to a into u inverse where u inverse is also unit so this means that uh, b is equal to what a into something v where i'm calling this v is equal to u inverse so this means that b and a are also associates so uh, so the meaning is if a, a, a and b are associates then it equivalently means that b and a are also associates of each other right so i will not say i will not in particular say a and b or b on a because they are now equivalent for us now let us look at what is the definition. The third important definition that we are going to need is something called as irreducible element. Okay, irreducible element. If you are in the in the space of polynomials, there we have uh, discussed about irreducible polynomials. Okay, but now we are going to define what we are going to define irreducible element. So what will I do? Is I will first take an element. Uh, P, so suppose let P be a non-zero, non-unit. I don't want it to be zero. I don't want it to be a unit also in an integral domain. I'm going to talk all this in integral domain. Okay. Then uh, P is set to be irreducible. If I can write P as AB, Okay, where A and B are also in D, where D is this integral domain, and P is also in the same in the integral domain, then either A is unit or B is unit. A is unit or B is unit. So if this thing happens, means if I have a if, if I have an element which is irreducible, and suppose if I try to factorize that irreducible element, then what should happen? One of the factor must be what? One of the factor must be a unit. If such thing happens, then I'm going to call that P to be an irreducible element. So the best thing is let us move to some example so that the idea will be clear. So if I take one simple example, let me go in the ring Z. Suppose I'm taking a set of integers then what, what p i will choose is i will say suppose i choose p equal to 5 okay then is p irreducible so it's very easy so 5 can be written as what 5 can be written as 5 into 1 or 5 can be written as in z okay you have to use only integers remember or 5 can be written as what minus 5 into minus one these are the only two possibilities that five can be written correct now now do you observe that here five is equal to a into b fashion here also five is written in the for fashion of a into b do you observe that out of a and b that i have written one of them is a unit who is a unit here so here b is unit because b is one in the second factorization minus five and minus one who is the unit again this is the unit so at least one of them has to be a unit suppose i take the the, the the number p equal to 4 okay then what will happen then 4 can be written as what 2 into 2 this is also not unit 2 is not unit in z 2 is also not unit in z so this means that 4 is what 4 is reducible in z and what about the above thing here 5 is irreducible in z means if you can factorize it basically in proper factorization that factorization should not contain units M means what ones minus ones then i will say that if it contains the fact if the factorization contains one then i will say that 
it will be, be what it will be irreducible but if you have if you can find a factorization in which none of them is becoming a unit then i will say that it will be what it will be a reducible element let me go to one more example now let me take uh, the ring let me take the ring zx now see this is now going to clear your concepts a little bit more try to look at zx and try to look at the uh, the element 2x uh, minus 10 okay in zx so this is uh, coefficients are in what coefficients are in z now is it reducible or irreducible element in zx now what i will do is i can say that you can all see that 2x minus 10 can be clearly written as 2 into what x minus 5 right now we cannot find a multiplicative inverse of x minus 5 x minus 5 should be multiplied by what so that i will get one i cannot multiply it by any any other polynomial so that here it should be a polynomial you cannot multiply here by one upon x minus five remember this this is not a polynomial right one upon x minus five is not a polynomial so this is wrong so i cannot multiply x minus five by any polynomial to get one so this means this is not a unit right what about two can is two a unit can i multiply by, by two two by something so that i will get one here i cannot multiply anything two so that i will get one because it is yeah, i'm working in this set of integers i cannot use half there so this means that this is also a not unit right so this means that 2x minus 10 has been factorized into parts such that none of them is becoming what none of them is becoming a unit and therefore it means that this 2x minus 5 is to 2x minus 10 is reducible in zx correct but now if i change the set instead of taking the set zx if i change the set and if i take the same polynomial in rx what is rx rx means set of all polynomials with real coefficients and i'm going to take the polynomial 2x minus 10 okay then is it reducible or irre irreducible so the thing is i will again write the polynomial 2x minus 10 as 2 into x minus 5 this is the only possible factorization or you can even write it as like this minus 2 into minus of minus x minus 5 but you understand the stories of both of them are the same right so this is the a type of a, a factorization of that p now look at this x minus 5 x minus 5 is a unit or not a unit x minus 5 cannot be multiplied by any polynomial to get one because one upon x minus 5 is not a polynomial so i cannot use that so this means that x minus 5 is not a unit in which set in the set rx correct now what about two is two a unit or not a unit can you multiply by two by something so that you will get one the answer to that question is yes i can multiply it by half because now i'm in the set of real numbers so this means that this two becomes what this two becomes a unit and therefore this polynomial p or this element p has been factorized such that one of them is coming to be what one of them is coming to be unit and therefore by definition this polynomial 2x minus 10 is what it will become an irreducible polynomial because for if you want a polynomial to be irreducible and if you try to write the factorization one of them turns out to be irreducible okay let me take one more example so suppose i'm taking the polynomial p which is equal to 2x minus 3 in the ring qx now what is what are the coefficients allowed the coefficients are allowed to be rational numbers okay think with me with me parallelly and try to guess your answer in the mind okay is it reducible or irreducible make a guess in your mind and check whether i'm going correct or not so i can write p is equal to 2x minus 3 and then i will say let me pull out 2 and then i can write x minus 3 by 2 i can do this because i'm in the set of rational numbers 
this polynomial is not a unit because I cannot find the multiplicative inverse of this polynomial. But two will become what? Two is a two is a unit because two multiplied by half will come out to be one. So this will be two is a unit in the set of rational numbers. And therefore, this polynomial P is what? Irreducible. Okay. If you take one more example, let me take a slightly go a little bit tough example now. So I'm going to take up the set is Z11x and the polynomial P. I'm going to take 2x minus 10 again. Okay, now is this polynomial irreducible element in Zx? Yes or no? So I have to show you what it is now. So p is equal to 2x minus 10. And let me slightly write it down. It is just 2 into x minus 5. Okay. x minus 5 is not a unit because I cannot multiply this polynomial by anything so that it will become what? It will give me 1. So x minus 5 multiplied by anything is not going to give me 1. So it is not a unit. But uh, can I do something about this 2? 2 should be multiplied by which number so that I will get 1 in Z11. Okay, in Z11. Now, what should I multiply this 2 so that I will get 1, right? 2 1s are 2, and if I take 2 5s are 2 6 are. If I take 2 6 are, I'll get 2 6 are 12, and 12 will become how much in Z11? 12 actually becomes what 12 becomes 1 right so this means that this 2 has multiplicative inverse how much this 2 has multiplicative inverse 6 and therefore this 2 will become a unit and this is the reason that this p is unit multiplied by something in that case this polynomial p becomes an irreducible polynomial or it becomes an irreducible element in the set z 11x okay